in my approach to my art is, is do something new and, and make it relevant to people. Create something smart, try to uplift, and, but to educate, you know. My job is to question things. It's not me feeding words to people. I'm not doing that. I'm just showing like new ways to look at, you know, issues. And to let people know, you know, it's okay to, to argue back and fight back against racism, against hate. I'm just here to state the case that it's okay to be an immigrant, it's okay to be brown. Everyone be yourself. My parents uh, immigrated from Zacatecas and Sinaloa, and I was born in San Diego. So I grew up going back and forth across the border, and I was in a gang, and, but luckily I got out, you know, and before anything really bad happened. I was, you know, profiled by the police all the time, and uh, even as an adult, I grew up with injustice, thinking, you know, this is not right. Why, why doesn't this make any sense? I got the idea uh, that you could change the world you know, with, through graphics, through graphic arts. When I went to Berkeley, we'd have uh, Mecha meetings and events, and we started performing, doing sketch comedy and I had a group called Chicano Secret Service. I also uh, started a magazine called Pocho Magazine uh, with a friend of mine. In there, I started drawing comics and I came up with the Cucaracha character. Eventually, I moved down to LA and the, uh, the LA riots happened. We got uh, assaulted by the cops. Me and my wife ended up on the ground. My piece, uh, White Man Can't Run the System, was based on the poster of uh, White Man Can't Jump, and it was, instead of Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes, it was Daryl Gates, the police chief, and George Bush the first, uh, looking confused, both of them, while City Hall burned in the background. So I realized, you know, I'm supposed to be an artist, you know, I'm not, I'm not meant to be an architect kind of locked down to an office, you know, I'm supposed to do this, and so I didn't look back after that. La Cucaracha, the daily comic strip, start, had its origins in the LA Weekly, weekly comic. Ran 17 years, my editorials got syndicated, so uh, the syndicate started asking, do you want to do a, a, a daily? You know, and I thought, yeah. I got in, uh, and which is like an almost impossible thing, you know, uh, to get a, a daily comic strip. Uh, because, you know, the comics pages, man, they don't change. One of my inspirations when I was young was the comic strip Gordo uh, by Gus Arriola, uh, who was just basically the first Latino comic strip in the United States. I thought, I'll do it. I think my work has had impact because, uh, you know, it's taught in schools. I mean, been studied by academics. My editorial cartoons sometimes have more impact because they're simple, bold images, you know, and people retain those, you know, forever, which is why I get the hate mail that I get. I've been called every name and been threatened uh, with death and violence, and I'm never going to stop. Bordertown was uh, uh, an amazing new kind of level that I hit. Most good art is uh, is edgy, and the show's smart and funny. This is Mexifonia. We've got a Native American, an Asian couple, and I even managed to find a white guy. The creator, Mark Henneman, is a guy that said, I don't want to be the white guy that writes the Latino show. And that's why he hired the most Latinos ever hired on a primetime television show, which were five Latino writers out of, out of 14 is in, an insane record. There's never been a show, uh, you know, like it. I hope that it's not too long before there's another show like it. As an artist, I, I uh, always get approached by 
uh, young artists. I always tell them, well, you know, uh, stand up for yourself, express what's inside you, and work on it and make it better. My philosophy is, you know, everyone should express themselves. Uh, everyone has a right to. My retirement plan is to die on my drawing table. I uh, always got something to say. Mm -hmm.